Hello everybody and welcome to Kangaroo English. I'm Christian and today we are coming to you live from Australia. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I am here with my sister Natasha who, who lives in Australia and so at the start of the class we are going to talk about um, Australian culture and any questions that you have about Australian English, about living in Australia, um, Australian food. So any questions you have, just, uh, just ask. Um, I, I hope that the, that the quality of the video is okay, um, because it was, um, <laughs> it was a bit difficult to, to get a good connection um, here where, where my sister lives. My sister lives out in in the country you could say um, in the country so um, yeah let me just have a look um, so yes um, some people asking about the weather how's the weather at the moment Tash really good yeah yeah what what but what, what how would you what how do you define really good just sunny in the day cool at night mm. blue skies happiness <laughs> yeah it's about um, about 27 degrees yeah. About 27 degrees. Yeah, blue skies. Um, it's nice. It's perfect. Not too hot, not too cold. Um, yeah, uh, Sally was asking, where, where are we? Uh, where are we? We are in Perth in Australia. So, um, if, this, <laughs> if, if, this, if this represented Australia, then, uh, then, then on this side would be all of the cities that everybody knows like Sydney and Melbourne and we're here on this side in Perth <laughs> away from everything <laughs> yeah exactly it's actually from Perth Perth is closer to Indonesia than to Sydney so it's um it's sometimes a little bit isolated it's the most it's a, isolated city in the world most isolated city in the world yes <laughs> um Yes, yeah, so um, let's have a look. Uh, uh, so yeah, we have lots of people here from um, from um, from Al someone from Algeria, from Myanmar, uh, from Sicily. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, my my sister is very cute. It's true, <laughs> very cute. Uh, from Ukraine, hello Olga from Ukraine. Um, uh, I think we have some students here who, who are living in Australia, who live in Melbourne or, or Canberra or Sydney. Hello. Um, so so um, the first question about Australia, Tash, is yeah. somebody here called um, Barbaros, who is a materials engineer, who wants to live and work in Australia. And, and he wants to know, is it easy to find a job? Is it difficult? Um, a material engineer, I think that would be probably pretty wanted okay. because we have the mines okay. um, in Perth. Um, jobs mostly are pretty easy to get. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that unemployment is like 4% or yeah. something. It's very low unemployment. Yeah. Um, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to work too hard to find a job, I don't think. Hmm. Yeah, so so there you go. So yeah, you probably because you're an engineer and and there's lots of manual trades. Yeah, you could probably probably find a job. Um, so Juan Benito is Spanish, but living in Caratha, Ew. crazy. Um, <laughs> Caratha's like a like a desert. It's like no, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, Alfredo, Alfredo wants to know if you live next to the coast and what about sharks? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> about, live about half an hour drive from the, the beach <coughs> and yes, there are sharks. So <laughs> if you don't want to be eaten, don't go into the <laughs> <a> park. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen a shark? Not in, the, no, not in real life. No. No. I remember, I, I actually have a little story from when, when we were younger. We were, we were on the coast, swimming in, in the water, and, and my, my sister was not in the water. She was standing on, on a jetty, 
Do you know what a jetty is? A jetty is like a, a wooden structure. And I was in the water with my cousin, and suddenly somebody shouted, Shark! And, and in Australia, this is the scariest thing that, that somebody can, can shout to you. And so my cousin and I, we were swimming, you know, like crazy to get out of the water. And, you know, the people were pointing at something in the water. And lots of people on the jetty, they, they pulled us out of the water. And we turned around and... It was a seal. seal. Yeah, a seal. Do you know what a seal is? Like, a, you know, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, but it was a very scary experience. And it shows that, you know, it's almost normal to, mm. to maybe have, have, have contact with sharks. Yes. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's have a look if there's any more questions here. Um, Hi Hippolito wants to know, how long did it take for me to get here? Well, it was um, one bus, um, three aeroplanes, four countries, and three days to get here. <laughs> when, 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 when I arrived, um, I felt... I felt like like a zombie because I'm quite I'm quite a you know a big person and it's very difficult for me to to sleep in an aeroplane so <laughs> um yes hello from Colombia Cambodia India um Charles wants to know what is the most famous I think he means the most famous thing in Perth I don't know, probably the beaches, I'd say. Mm. The beaches and the river. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why people come here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good place. Yeah. But yeah, the beaches definitely are pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, the beaches. Yeah. I mean, the beaches are amazing. Um, basically, you have hundreds of, well, thousands of kilometers of, of beach. White, white sandy beach. Um, and, and apart from the sharks, mm. yeah. it's, it's, it's perfect. Um, but maybe things like famous, like things, um, we've got the bell tower. I think that's yeah. meant to be the famous thing, but it's not really <laughs> they, exciting. So. No, they, um, I think it's more unnatural beauty. <coughs> don't you reckon? Yeah, like I think so. WA, it's like, just like. There's coast and just the the wine region. Yeah, there's that. wine, the coast. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, about the bell tower. So, <laughs> when when did they build the bell tower? What year was that? Do you think? I don't know. Maybe twenty years ago, yeah. they decided to build a uh, a monument with bells. Because some country gave us the bells. Oh, really? As a gift. And we had oh. to build something to put them in. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> somebody gave us bells, and we <laughs> we built something to put the bells in. Um, and this, it's a very strange sort of structure. Um, and and when they first, when it first opened, I think a lot of people hated it. Yeah, because it cost millions of dollars. As well. <laughs> yeah, it cost a lot of money, and yeah, um, and people called it the cockroach. Yeah, because it looks. It looks a little bit like a cockroach. Um, so, architecturally, I don't think that it's really very an exciting place. But beaches, parks, yeah, you know, lifestyle. nature, yeah, the lifestyle. <laughs> Milena says that Perth is goals. Oh, really? Yeah. Goodness. Well, Milena, I mean, if if you love being outside, if you love the coast and um, the beach, then it's a perfect place for you. Um, Ro 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 Rogelio was asking about how is the market for psychologists looking for, for work? <laughs> you have to remember that my sister is, is a fitness instructor. Okay, She's, a, she's a, a, a personal trainer. She's not you know, involved in the world of employment, but I mean... <laughs> Probably pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's Australian optimism. Probably pretty good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but there's probably a lot of crazy people here. 
<laughs> um, Amacor was asking about the bleaching of reefs in Australia. Mm. So, so basically, uh, the coral reefs um, can be bleached. Is it caused by some um, salinity of the water? Um, no. Yeah, we don't know anything about bleaching. <laughs> 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 it's really bad though. It's bad. We know it's bad. That's it. <laughs> I think it's got to do with just like the stuff we're putting out into the water, like uh, you know, and the maybe the the boats that we're allowing to go past at the big container boat. Yeah, we don't know anything about bleaching. We know it's bad, and they should stop Whatever it. Whatever they're doing, the bleaching should stop. <laughs> really sorry, you know, English teacher. Personal trainer, there's no, you know, yeah. Uh, sorry, Amacor. Um, uh, Paolo said that um, he saw a shark in Perth when he was kite surfing. Damn. Okay, Paolo, that's not an amazing experience, okay? <laughs> Seeing a shark when you're in the water is not amazing. It's terrifying. It's horrible. <laughs> um, and then you stop kite surfing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for, for people that are just joining... This is my sister Natasha, okay? My sister Natasha lives in Perth. She's Australian 100%. So if you have any questions about, about um, Australia, then, then you can ask her. But no questions about bleaching of coral reefs. <laughs> um, so what, okay, what's your favorite food then? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably Italian food, actually. Pizza? Pe oh, <laughs> Thanks for bringing it to Australia. <laughs> yeah, um, another interesting fact about Australia, that Australia has the biggest population of Italians outside of Rome. Mm. So there are more uh, Italians living in Australia than in Napoli, for example. It's crazy. Um, and... My sister, her favorite food is pizza. What a surprise. <laughs> what a surprise. But what, what, what would be a typical food in Australia? Oh, <laughs> I don't think you can really say that because everyone eats foods from everywhere around the world. Okay. We just have every other country's food here. But like the typical barbecue, okay. like meat on a barbecue is, I guess, Australian. Yeah. But otherwise, it's just everyone eats everyone else's awesome food. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that if if you walk if you walk down a street in Australia, you can find restaurants from Asia, from Italy, from India. anything, India, Afghanistan, yeah, crazy, um, Mexico, Mexican, and and I think Australians like to eat all of these different foods. So, yeah, maybe, and this is maybe something also interesting about Australia is that because it's a very young country. I don't think they have a very strong identity. It's more a, a collection of different influences. Mm. Um, so but I think that makes it like a little. That's why it's laid back because everyone's so different. Yeah, you just have to tolerate everyone. Yeah, tolerance. <laughs> so do, do do you know what this means to be laid back? To be laid back means you're very relaxed. You're laid back. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and and Australians are famous for being laid back and relaxed. Um, <laughs> so, um, where I'm sorry, I'm just I missed some questions. Um, okay, um, uh, Juan Benito wants to know why do you speak so correctly if you're Australians? <laughs> uh. um, <laughs> Well, I think that me and my sister, um, well, I don't know, we, we, we are just awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why we speak so, so well, we, we're just awesome. Um, Mel wants to know, do you eat kangaroo meat? I did the other day, actually. <laughs> not really? like, no, I wouldn't really eat, buy it and eat on purpose, okay. but um, it's usually dog food here. Yeah. Okay. Normally... <laughs> Okay, so... And it's probably in the meat pie, because you don't really know what's in that, do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, the kangaroo meat normally is used to make dog food, because in Australia, the kangaroo is considered a pest. Well, 
well, sort well, it's not. It's like an, our national animal. We love it, but there's lots of them, so people go and shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's here's another fun fact. Australia is the only country in the world that eats the animals on their national emblem. <laughs> <laughs> so, because in Australia you eat both the kangaroo and the emu, which are on the Australian coat of arms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I think in general people don't eat kangaroo meat on a day-to-day -day basis. No, no, not really. No. So, yeah. Um, it's very low fat though. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so it's healthy. There you go, yeah, low it's fat. more healthy than beef. Healthier than beef. So, if you can get kangaroo meat, you should eat it. It's good. <laughs> Um, Muhammad wants to know if Australia is similar to, more similar to American or British English. What do you think? British. British? Yeah. yeah. Maybe, like, leaning a little bit more towards America as we go, mm. maybe, but I think definitely British. Mm. Yeah, I think, um, now, today I bought the newspaper because... For me, the this is this is today's newspaper, okay, and this the newspaper I think will explain to you a little bit about about Australian culture, okay. So the 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 very the the front page, the most important story is the photographs of Princess Charlotte. Oh bless. Okay, so Princess <laughs> Princess Charlotte is the daughter of Kate and William um, in England. So you can see that, that in Australia, the, the connection with, with England, especially with the royal family, mm. is really strong. This is the front page of the paper, photographs of Princess Charlotte, okay? And the second thing is a plastic bag ban. Um, so they want to ban... They want to eliminate plastic bags. And to me, this, this shows the side of Australian culture where they are very environmentally conscious. Mm. No? Except with the bleaching. Except with the bleaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the, caps, the cancer thing at the bottom yeah, is and totally as well because every, every second thing is about cancer. Yeah, it... it it seems that in Australia, everything gives you cancer. Not just smoking, but drinking beer, eating, everything gives you cancer. Yeah. Um, so, but this gives you an idea um, about the, the types of things that are important. And also, of course, on the back, um, what's this, Tash? What's, what's this story? In football. that we trust. Football player, AFL. Yeah. So... He he is a, he is a famous a famous player. No, his Nick is it Nick Natanui? Is that his no, name? No, no, he's oh. black. Okay, so Nat. Well, who is this Nat then? I don't know. Nat Five, maybe. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't really follow. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so basically, in in Australia, we have a special type of football, and if you watch this game, you will think that it's crazy because the ball is is not round; it's an oval. Yeah. And the game is brutal, no. Yeah. Like, they, really brutal. They really, like, get knocked hard and then they get up and they keep going. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're not, it's not like English football where, you know, they fall over and they're like, oh, my leg. And nobody touch them. <laughs> yeah, and, and nobody touch In Australian rules for, you know, people are punching each other <laughs> in the face and climbing, climbing and no problems. You know, they're big... <laughs> Big strong men. If you after, after this class, you should you should Google Australian rules football and yeah, it's really it's really um really good. Okay, so let's have a look at some more questions. So yeah, so I agree with Tash. I think that it's very close to British English because we use British spelling. For example, we in the word color we put the u. Not like American spelling. Um, a lot of the vocabulary that we use as well is British. Mm. In fact, almost almost fifty percent of the Australian population. Another fact: <laughs> almost fifty percent of the Australian population were born outside of Australia. Not even born in Australia. Wow. Yeah. So, 
you know, there's a lot of influence from Britain, from Asia, um, and yeah, I think there there is a lot of influence from American films and television yeah. programs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then when like you know when we went to America and we were like, oh, we thought we were a bit like Americans, but then we weren't really weren't, yeah. you know. But you go to England and you're like, yeah, we get uh, why we're like, oh like, yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah it's Ireland true. And, you know. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's true. Many when when I was 21, how old were you? 15. Yeah, so I was 21, she was 15. We we went to America, and it's true. We didn't feel yeah at home. It was more. A strange it was good, culture, but it wasn't like us. Yeah, their, their sense of humour and their just everything. Um, yeah, we've definitely got that from England and Ireland. That yeah. sense of humour. Yeah, but then yeah, it's true. When you go to England, you feel more at home. Yeah, yeah. So the motherland. <laughs> the motherland. Um, Javier wants to know what are the safest beaches in WA. I think they have some beaches with shark nets. Is that right? I don't think so, no? to be honest. But uh, like. If you swimming, like they just did the last helicopter patrols yesterday, actually. So they patrol like the popular Perth beaches. Okay, so they with fly a with a helicopter in summer, in the hot, hot months. Okay. Um. Yeah, they'll do that during the day. Okay. Um. And then they'll have a siren if there's a shark. Okay. But always swim as well, like where there's between the flags, like where there's lifesavers there. Okay. Yeah, and all the like popular Perth beaches would have that. Okay, so all of the, yeah. the beaches have a section which is safe from, yeah. from sharks. Okay. Not safe from sharks. Oh. But if you're drowning, oh. you someone will save you. <laughs> but if, if you're getting eaten by a shark, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> but you just gotta hope the helicopter spotted it. <laughs> okay, so basically <laughs> basically swim between the flags and you probably won't drown, but you could be eaten by a shark. <laughs> my Well, my rule is when I'm in the ocean, always make sure that there's people out further than you. So the shark will get them first. <laughs> so Tash is using other humans <laughs> as shields against sharks. That's my sister. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, I, I am going to be in Australia until the middle of May. Um... I don't know if any of you live in Perth. Hello, if you do live in Perth. Uh, hey, Haley says that you're so cute. And Ver, Ver, <laughs> Vertania says that you're beautiful. <laughs> um, so, um, Ish, Ishinji is moving to Australia and wants to know if they can get a job in the BPO industry. Do you know what the BPO industry is? I don't, I don't know what the BPO industry is. Can you... Um, really sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so some students from Pakistan, from Syria. Hello, lol. Um, yeah, yeah Brazil, France. Crazy. Muhammad, <laughs> Muhammad wants to know what's the temperature now? Well, be like 15. 15, yeah, so it's, it's 7.30 at night. It's actually dark outside. I, I wanted to do the class outside, but it's dark, so impossible. And it's, yeah, about 15 degrees, so it's good. I mean, I'm in a t-shirt, I'm comfortable. You know, short, no sleeves, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, okay, so let's have a look. Um, S. Kim says she is a fitness instructor Whee! too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's have a look. Um, um, Bob wants to know, is it expensive or cheap to live in Australia? I think if you have a job, um, it's... Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Thanks, Gypsy. Say. So, yes, it's 19 degrees at the moment. <laughs> Good work, Gypsy. <laughs> um, what was the question? <laughs> Is it expensive or cheap oh, to, to live in Perth? I think if you have a job... Um, you're okay. Like, if you have a sort of a good job. If you have a, a really... Like, if... Yeah... If you work in a job where you're not getting paid very good wage, it you'll probably struggle, I okay. think. But if you've got like something, you know, like a, something behind you, you have an actual profession. Um, well, like if you're an engineer or, or a oh, psychologist. Yeah, you'd be absolutely laughing. 
Okay, yeah. you'll be laughing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. things are, it is expensive to buy stuff, but you're earning heaps of money. So, yeah. So, so you can see that my sister has used two, two um, pieces of very Australian vocabulary. So, the first thing she says wa was that um, if something's good, if you're in a good situation, you can say that you'll be laughing. Yeah. So, like, if you have a lot of money, or you have a great job, or you're having a good holiday, you're laughing. Everything's perfect. <laughs> and then also, she used the, the adjective heaps, okay? Just showing her my bad English. <laughs> no, no, it's, like, it's Australian English. Heaps, heaps means a lot, but it's like informal English. So, you know, I have heaps of money, um, or you can say... You know, there's heaps of sharks. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I, I love you heaps. Okay. So you can use it in lots of different ways. Um, okay. So, so yeah, Marisara, oh, I just, sorry, the comments are going crazy. Marisara Marissa was interested about the, um, it's called the intrusive R. Okay. The intrusive R is where um, if you have two vowels, sometimes we, in, the Aust in Australian English, you, you insert an R. So, for example, if you say um, law and order, but if you say that in a normal way. Law and order. Yeah. So it's like there's an R in there. Law and order. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Weird. Yeah, this. <laughs> um, yes, this this is used in specific situations, and it's and it depends on the mouth position of the words um, that that are joined together. Okay, um, difficult to difficult to difficult to to give you a rule about that. Okay, but. If you ask me on Facebook, I will talk to you more about it, okay? Um, so, someone wants to know, are there any dangerous animals near where you live? <laughs> yeah, snakes. Okay, snakes. Yeah, snakes, that will poison us. Um, sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Redbacks. Redbacks, Red okay, so... everywhere. Yeah, so... Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the redback spider, Tash? So, redback spider is just a, a spider. It's only little. It's about that big. And it's black. And it's got a little red stripe on its back. And um, they're common everywhere. Like, yeah. Um, For yeah. example, where would you find a redback spider in your house? Where? In the house? Yeah, where? Or just in general? Oh, yeah, in your house. In your house, if you, okay. If you're like me. <laughs> <laughs> and outside? Outside in the cubby. Okay. Um, the cubby. I went to the, a lot of people, to the a lot of people the don't... other day and there was one hanging down from the umbrella. <laughs> like nearly like went straight in my face as I walked past. Okay, so my sister <laughs> nearly had a venomous, a very highly venomous spider in her face <laughs> at a pub. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, they're, they're pretty bad, aren't they? Yeah. But yeah. I've, and I know people have been bitten by them and they're fine, like their legs swelled right up and stuff. But they're fine, I mean, huge leg, huge <laughs> swollen leg, you know, but fine. Yeah. Well, the, the, the redback spider is, is the same family as the more famous black widow, okay? Mm -hmm. So, if you know the black widow spider, it's the same, it's very, it won't kill you unless you're a baby or very old, or maybe. Or you don't go to the hospital like straight away and yeah. get like some treatment. But it's not yeah. good. Yes, your leg will swell up and maybe your leg will drop off or something. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Coco Poland wants to know: Are Australians aggressive drivers? Mm, a lot of them are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it. Uh, yeah, they. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. There is actually a special word, okay, a special noun to describe somebody who drives very fast and aggressively, a hoon. hoon yeah. So there's a word for this, a hoon, okay, it's H-O-O-N, hoon. And, and what is a hoon? Well, they usually have like, like big muscle cars, like big V8. Muscle like car. Massive, 
big cars and they just yeah they drive around fast and do donuts and stuff like donuts that. okay donut is when you drive your car in a circle and it leaves the the mark like a donut on yeah. the yeah or um, burnouts where you just go and like, lots of smoke yeah, yeah. Burn. um but mostly like, I mean, that is a across the board thing, but mostly the angry drivers are just in the cities. I think the country drivers are pretty chillaxed, aren't they? Like okay. country people, yeah. Chillaxed, okay. <laughs> chillaxed, this is another word, okay, of, uh, an Australian word. This is a combination of chilled and relaxed <laughs> and combined together chillaxed. It's very, very relaxed, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think, I think in any big city yeah. you have... People, drivers who are impatient mm. Mm. Um, and aggressive. I mean, one one thing that irritates me when I when I drive here is that there's no rule for staying in on one side of the road. You know, in in Europe they're very disciplined. You know, you drive and you overtake and you move over. Yeah, but yeah, here, I'm just like, nah. drive wherever you want on the left, on the right. <laughs> So it's chillaxed. It? Yeah, it's chillaxed, exactly. <laughs> people get frustrated with it, though. Um, <laughs> Muhammad wants to know, what is the symbol for Perth? <coughs> I know what it is. Oh, like the emblem? Yeah. Oh, it's the emu, isn't it? And no. the kangaroo? No. <laughs> That's for Australia. Oh, I don't know. There's like on the last... It's black. Thing. And it lives in the river. Oh, the black swan. Yeah. Yeah, true, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the emblem for Perth, the, the symbol of Perth is a black swan. Mm. Because... Um, we have lots of them in the river. Yeah, because Perth is basically situated on a river. So on one side you have the city, and on the other side you have um, residential housing. Um, and in the middle, yeah, there's lots of swans and... Stuff, mm. other birds. I don't really know about birds, but yeah, the so black swans are very famous. There's been sharks in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Has a swan ever been eaten by a shark? Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> so look, Bruno, we have another personal trainer, yeah. but well, he wants to know if you're a personal trainer in the gym. Sorry, I'm I'm saying personal trainer, but she's a, a gym instructor. Is that what? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do anyway? Can you explain? I so I teach classes at the gym. So I go up on the stage and yeah. And and what <laughs> what what kind of classes do you sort of teach? Um, they're called the Jungle Body. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Jungle Body. <laughs> um, and they're a bit dancey. Okay. Yeah. So it's like dance and exercise mixed together. Yeah. So so what's your like um, your exercise philosophy? You know, like what's <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Okay. You, she stole that from Nike. <laughs> but um, in what do you mean? Just do it. I mean. Fine. I mean maybe. Fine. Okay. May, this is not about English, but maybe some of you at home. You know, maybe you feel like you want to exercise or, you know, something. I mean, what would what would you say to these people who maybe are afraid of exercise or don't want to exercise? Or I think you need to find something you enjoy doing. Okay. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to do anything like that you find boring or anything. Just find something that you're moving and you enjoy doing and do it. Okay. Just do it. <laughs> and then when you get bored of that, find something else. Okay. So, there you go. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> um, so, um, okay, let's have a look. Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm just <coughs> looking at some comments here. Um, uh uh, Dipian wants to know approximately how much would an engineer earn if he has a good job? Um, I would just be guessing, okay. saying over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, more so more than a hundred thousand dollars. Australian. Australian dollars. Okay, so you you would live, I think, very comfortably for for this. Yeah. Well, they well the studies have shown that um, as a family. And like <laughs> the happiness does not go up 
a hundred thousand dollars is is it that's happiness apparently oh. it doesn't matter if you earn over that um your happiness rate scale will not go up over a hundred thousand dollars but it goes down below that oh okay so if you're earning a hundred thousand it's yeah. the sweet spot the perfect amount to earn yeah. okay um, well, let, let me show you some things that you can buy with your money, okay? So, um, this is, whoops, the, these are um, Tim Tams, okay, the most, the most famous biscuit, I think, in Australia. And with this biscuit, you can do the Tim Tam Slam, okay, where you, you drink coffee through the biscuit. It's so the best, good. the so best. Good. I'm going to make a video about Tim Tam Slam. <laughs> and also, um, you can buy Vegemite, okay? Vegemite is a black, let me show you, let me show you Vegemite. It's a black, okay, like a black paste. And it smells, so good. It smells, <laughs> <laughs> it smells great. Um, this is, it smells really um, salty. It, it tastes very salty. And you have it on your toast in the morning for breakfast, mm. and this is a typical um, a typical thing for for Australians to have. So um, I think these these were uh, two dollars. They were on special, yeah. and this was um, I think six dollars. That okay. will last you so long because yeah. you only need a little bit of that. Yeah. Mm. So and then, and the newspaper was um, the newspaper was one dollar fifty. Okay, to give you an idea about the approximate cost of things. But one thing for me, which is very bad, is that coffee is really expensive. How, how much? Five dollars is a normal price to pay. And if you want something fancy like soy milk or anything different, you'll pay more than five dollars. Five dollars for a coffee, that's, that's difficult. But you because, could be earning a hundred thousand. Yeah, if you're earning a hundred thousand, a coffee's fine. No problems. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, some people asking about the differences between American English and Australian English. Um, you know, I, I think that pronunciation really is the major difference, okay? But apart from that, I think that if you saw some writing from an American or an Australian person or a British person, it would be identical. Mm -hmm. You know, grandma... Maybe some vocabulary, but not really a lot. Some slang. Some but slang, yeah. But yeah. You know, ninety percent of the language is, is going to be exactly the same, especially in a formal context. Mm -hmm. Maybe more informal, like emails or or maybe you know messaging if you have slang. But really, apart from the pronunciation, there's not a lot of difference between the the different languages, and it's the same language. Yeah, between the, the dialects, <laughs> sorry. The, but um, over time, this may change, you know. Australian English will probably separate from, from, Briti uh, from American English and British English. And, but this process will take a long time. So, um, Tiago needs a job and he wants to know if he can wash your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's car is filthy, actually, so that's perfect. Um, Ishanji says that the BPO industry is people who provide solutions to incoming callers about broadbands or computers, like call center. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, call center work? I think, like, that we don't, we offshore, off, there's a lot of that in different countries, like, I think a lot of people, I think they can pay them less in other countries so most like the people that whenever we ring um up about something they're usually in india yeah so i doubt there would be a lot of work yeah yeah i think the the, the cost of labor in australia is expensive mm. and yeah so like 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 tash was saying if you if you call an australian company probably you will speak to somebody in india so i'm sorry ashanji but i don't think that the industry is very strong in australia no um, <laughs> um, okay, let's have a look. So, Wildfire777 says that there are redbacks in Japan as well. Wow. I, I didn't know that. Really? Redbacks in Japan? That's crazy. Um, okay, so, Rogelio wants to know, what's the difference between Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, and Perth in terms of culture and quality of life, etc.? 
Um, well, um, Sydney, I think Perth is probably the most expensive of all of them to live. Really? Yeah. More I expensive think, than... I think coffee is cheaper in Sydney and Melbourne. I think coffee is cheaper everywhere. Because we go by the <laughs> price of coffee, really. <laughs> the coffee country. index. Yeah. Okay. Um, but... Um, Okay, so the culture, I guess, like, Melbourne is, like, a really trendy place. Like, the city is, like, trendy. It's, like, fashion. It's music. It's art. It's really, like, that Sydney is much more, I guess, like, the capital, like, big city. It's not really, like, as trendy kind of thing. Okay. Um, Brisbane, well, Queensland is very laid back, like... <laughs> They're, Very laid back in Queensland. Yeah, they talk They talk at half the speed of the rest of Australia. Okay, so that's good. If you're learning English, go to Queensland <laughs> because they talk very slowly. Go, the higher up in Queensland you go, the slower they'll talk. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. There you go. So go to the very, very north of Queensland <laughs> and they will speak like this. But they'll also say, how yeah, you going, mate? <laughs> and you won't know what they're saying. <laughs> Um, okay. and quality of life I guess it's just what you want from your city like in Perth we don't really you know we call us we joke about our own selves like you know it's we call it wait a while WA wait a while because everything takes another 10 years to get to us as far as culture oh, fashion okay. like any kind of trend or anything it's just but like if you, it's a great place to like raise a family, you know, like with the lifestyle of, yeah. <laughs> so, um, there you go. Um, so it's, it's about choosing a lifestyle, but, but the opinion of people in Perth is that, yeah, is that maybe it's a bit behind in, yeah. cult, in terms of culture, yeah. but I don't know if that's true or if that's just people in Perth being self deprecating. I'm not sure. Um, no, well, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, Ina wants to know about the pronunciation of this word in Australian. Could you say this word? Either. Mm, either. So what you'll notice in Australian English, okay, is that the vowels are very long, okay? And the more Australian, the more Aussie the accent, the longer the vowels, like, a British person might say, banana. And a real Aussie? Banana? Yeah. But, like, if you were... <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. So, you can see how much longer it is. But if you were doing a very Australian accent, what would you say? Banana. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can see how long the vowel is. Banana. So, that, that stressed vowel is very long. Okay? So, maybe if you said the word, you know... Either in a very Australian accent. Either. Yeah. So you can see it's very long. Either. Either. And it might rise or fall. Okay. You have the vowel is long with, with a lot of like up and down, a lot of song, a lot of melody. <laughs> because remember that a big influence on the Australian accent is the Irish accent. Um, and the Irish accent is very sing song up and down with the vowels um so yeah if you want to sound australian long vowels mm. you know and keep your mouth closed okay don't don't open your mouth a lot <laughs> ah, okay mouth closed and long vowels banana banana <laughs> banana <laughs> um george wants to know do you speak spanish no. She speaks the important words. For example, what's wine in Spanish? Vino. Vino. Vino uh, tinto. Vino tinto, okay. Um, coffee? Cafe. <laughs> the important... Um, what else? Agua? Agua. <laughs> <laughs> um, in in um, last year, in February, I, I came to Australia with my son... And it was the middle of summer. It was very hot. And he, it was his first time in a hot country. And for, for four weeks, he said, water, water, in Spanish. He's going, agua. 
<laughs> he was <laughs> he was thirsty all the time because of the. It was like forty degrees. <laughs> so, um, loving hobby has sent you lots of presents, Tash. Oh, great! Um, Mr. Coco, Mr. Coco wants to know what do you do if a spider bites you? Um, I think you probably um, like look at what the spider was. Mm. If it wasn't a red bat. Don't worry too much. Um, but probably, like, if it wasn't a red bat, I would go still go and, like, try and just get the spider and take, like, I would probably still go to the hospital just in case, okay. like, with the spider. So you take the spider to the hospital. So they know what it is. Okay. Yeah. If it was definitely a red bat, squash it and, like, if you, like, got a bit on your arm, like, do a tourniquet around it and then be really calm. Because the more you, you get worked up, the more the blood will rush around your body. So try and be really calm and just go to the hospital. Okay. Catch the spider. Okay, so the spider's bitten you. <laughs> you're in pain, probably dying. Or take a photo of it with your iPhone. <laughs> so you're like, ah, oh, my arm. Take a photo of the spider, catch it, and then go to hospital. <laughs> okay, easy. <laughs> um... um Tanya wants to know, what's a popular subject to study in Australia where you can get a job quickly with good money? Mm. Depends, like, what you mean by good money. Like, mm. like the jobs that we are in need of, which is, I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but, like, nurses, like, the, those kind of jobs. Okay, where, nurses, doctors. No, I don't know. I don't know about doctors, but okay. nurses, carers, like, because everyone's sort of getting older. Um, so they're needing a lot of like aged care workers as well, but that's not good money, I don't think. Okay. But nurse, like you earn pretty good money as a nurse. Okay. Yeah, it's not like being an engineer, but. Yeah, I think the the thing the thing about Australia is that the Australian economy is very reliant. It's very important the mining industry. Mm. So if you can get a job related to the mining industry, like engineering. Uh, electrician, yeah. um, mechanic. But they're sort of, they think that it's only going to be another 10 years or something. Yeah, okay. So so they're, they're thinking, yeah, another 10 years and it could, mm. it could finish. Okay. Maybe so, like computer programming. Computer programming. Mm. Okay. Um, of course, not a good idea to base your future plans <laughs> on what we're saying because... <laughs> okay just we're not employed in either of those. we're not professionals <laughs> at, at talking about this um are we both australian yes i was we were both she's my sister we were born in in, in perth um but i i moved away when i was when i was 21 and tash my sister continued to live here for for a majority of that time um where did we visit in america <laughs> Everywhere. Uh, yeah, we went to um, New York, um, Mississippi. New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, Los Angeles. Um, Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. It was a great holiday. We went from, from, from west to east. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was really good. Um, uh, okay, let's have a look. Um, more comments. Um <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, um, so, um, uh, Uwal, uh, wants to know the difference between Australia and New Zealand. Like, well, like, as in the culture, I guess, well, uh, it's a lot colder, and they've got lots of mountains, and... They've got Maoris. <laughs> okay, so it's cold. <laughs> so it's cold and there's mountains and mountains. what are Maoris? Tash? Maoris are the indigenous New Zealanders, but they're like they're they're quite um, quite that sort of strong. Okay. Strong. They've got a very strong culture, and when they got invaded. They didn't. They didn't lose that culture. Like mm. we, like the Aboriginals here, have have 
see, have sort of lost theirs. Yeah. I don't want to say lost it, but... Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a very... It's the, very the, strong, and they're very mm. respected as well, I, I think, in New Zealand, the Maoris. Mm. Um, but I think they're kind of like us, like just sort of with a different twang. Yeah, the, the New Zealand accent is, is a little bit different from the Australian accent. Um, it's like bosh and chops. Yeah, exactly. It's really strange. So, yes, the, the I in fish becomes like ah. Oh, so, fish is fush. 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 Fush and chops. Fush and chops. <laughs> um, which is the, the typical, the, the most strange um, part of the New Zealand pronunciation. Mm -hmm. um, but, yes, it's, it's, it's very sad what has happened to the indigenous people in, in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they have terrible social problems and... But uh, personally, I have noticed in the past 10 years that there's been a sort of a resurgence of the recognition of yeah. Aboriginal people well, in Australia. Yeah, I guess, like, when was that Rudd said sorry? Mm. He did in a, a public... So who's apology. Kevin Rudd? Like, Rudd is the... Kevin Rudd was the ex-Prime Minister, and he said, got up and said sorry for everything they did because they, when they invaded, they basically wanted to wipe them out so they they took from the the camps that where they lived they took the ba the children and the babies that looked the most white and tried to breed breed the aboriginal out of them basically so there's this whole thing, and it was only like 50 years ago there's this whole generation of people who yeah are screwed yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they really did bad things <laughs> yeah um Okay, so let's look at some other questions. So, um, um, how much does a nurse earn approximately each year? Okay, we don't know. Maybe like, I'm just going to go with... Could do it, Tash. Seventy. Like, if you're like full-time, I'd say like 70 to 80 grand. Okay, so 70 to 80 thousand. Yeah. So, you can see that my sister is saying 70 to 80 grand. Okay, so grand is slang for thousand, right? Mm. So one grand, two grand, 70 grand, 80 grand. Um, Vitaly wants to know about how affordable is it to buy a house in a big city in Australia? Um, well, I can't really talk for other places. I know Sydney is really expensive apparently because it's always in the news <laughs> and that no one can buy a house. Here, um, it depends where you live. You can get a, you could build a, if you're a first home buyer, you could build a, a nice brand new house, but you would be very far away from the city though. Like, yeah. Um, and that would be, you could probably do that for like three fifty, four hundred thousand. 400,000. Um, but if you wanted to buy a house, you know, it's quite easy for a house to be close to a million dollars. Otherwise, like in near the city, a million dollars is like, you know, pretty around the, the mark. A yeah. million dollars, people. That's a lot of money. That's, that's 10 years as an engineer. <laughs> um, and not eating. <laughs> and not eating, yeah, exactly. Um, so Sergio wants to know if there are different dialects across Australia. Um, in Australia is different because the diet your 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 pronunciation is not related to geography, whereas in a lot of other countries, it's where you live that that defines your accent. In Australia, your accent is defined by your socio-economic <laughs> position. Okay, so basically, there are three accents in Australia. There's um, the in the middle we have the standard Australian. Okay, general Australian. Then we have the posh Australian called cultivated, which is basically British. Okay. And then we have the crocodile. Um, and I, okay. <laughs> um, so I think, Tash, maybe because you read a sentence yeah. demonstrating the three accents, oh, that would yeah. be nice. Yeah, so how would you okay. read, for example... Um, this this in your um, uh, th this first one here in, in your normal accent. Okay, the circle is brave new world for our brave new world, fast, witty, and troubling. 
Okay, so that's that would be that would be classed as a as a standard Australian accent. And now, if you read it in a cultivated way, in a posh yeah, way, in, like, in well, posh but kind of what you would say would be a posh Australian accent. I don't know. I would just do English. I'll do English then. Okay. The circle <laughs> is a brave new world <laughs> for our brave new world. Fast, witty, and troubling. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm so much better at bogan. <laughs> so you, so you'll notice that that you know, the first thing that she thinks. My sister thinks when she thinks about a posh accent is British, yeah. and that shows how strong that British influence is, you know. Um, mm. And and if you think about, and I was thinking about this today. If you think about the GPS in your car, if you think about the voice in an airport, it's always British. Yeah. British accents are like the 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 number one accent in in all of English. It's posh and mm. professional and. Mm. Um, and now, could you read this in your broad bogan accent, Tesh? The circle is brave new world for our brave new world. Fast, witty, and troubling. <laughs> so, the, I think the first thing you'll notice is how slow she reads yeah. compared to the other accents. So, that's really interesting. It's, it's much slower. And also, did you hear the vowels, how long? Okay, it's not world, it's world. <laughs> um, um, so anyway, my sister's daughter, Gypsy, wants to come and say hello to you all. Come say hi, Gypsy. Say hello to everyone. Um, so obviously Gypsy um, has been born and raised in, in Australia, goes to school in Australia. So um, why don't you tell them about you? Tell everybody about you. Like, how old are you? Six. Six. And um, what about your hobbies? What do you like to do? Gymnastics. Okay, you're going to have to talk louder. Jazz. You're gonna have gymnastics to... and jazz. Okay. Um, gymnastics and jazz. And um, what about your favorite food? Because your mum's favorite food is pizza, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult question. I know. I don't know. She doesn't know. Uh, chicken nuggets. I love... Most of my favourite food is like chocolate and <laughs> Easter eggs. Easter eggs. Chocolate and Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> and kids are surprises. Uh-huh. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, so, um, guys, I'm, I'm really sorry, but... Um, the hour is up, and um, the kids are going to go to bed. Um, we're going to have some beers, maybe, <laughs> maybe a beer. Um, uh, and, and I'm going to um, start planning my classes because I have some special surprises for you coming up very soon. And next week, next week you can, you can talk again to, to me and my sister at the usual time. And maybe we will have an extra special surprise live class for you. Let's see if we have time for this. Um, so, yes, thank you very much, Tash. Thanks. And thanks, Gypsy. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope that you enjoyed this. I know that we didn't really talk a lot about, um, you know, the technicalities of the Australian language. But... Um, uh, hopefully you learned something interesting about Australian culture and you got to listen to my sister and Gypsy um, talking in their Australian accent. Um, so I will see you all again soon. This is Kangaroo English. I'm Christian. I'm Tash. Gypsy. <laughs> and I will see you again soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>